And hello race fans, welcome here as we get ready for race number 18 of the season. This is actually our halfway point of the season as well. Race 18 at Coca-Cola Super Speedway as we're getting ready for our back-to-back -back Super Speedway weeks. Last week we ran at Tennessee Super Speedway in which we saw Mason Powers go to victory lane. Well, we're in for hopefully as exciting a restricted plate race here at Coca-Cola. And 21 drivers are going to be fighting for 7 spots in the starting lineup for this week's Coca-Cola 400. First car off track is going to be the WWE Chevrolet of Michael Norman, followed by the Ford Travel Motor Coach Chevrolet of James Qualls. Matt McIntyre is now off of Pit Road. Goes to 52 of Seth Cole. 82 of Jace Nelson, the 10 of Joshua Michaels. Interesting, two of those drivers that left pit road are very much in the top story for this knockout qualifying session. Michael Norman dropped to 37th in the point standings. Joshua Michaels moved up to 36th. Now both of them are former winners this season, but both of them are still a long ways back from 35th in points, which at this point is still Austin LaPlante. The both of them have to keep making races and have to get good finishes in order to make themselves even have a case to be able to get up into the top 30 in points and have their wins this season count towards a wild card position. Now, Joshua Michaels did make the race last week at Tennessee, but Michael Norman did not. That's why Norman dropped a spot to Michaels, and now Michaels is in the 36th position in the point standings. Green flag was just shown for Michael Norman, so he's now on a timed lap. James Qualls right behind him. This is a super speedway, so it's going to follow restrictor plate rules. You're going to want to have a drafting partner or maybe a group of cars to work your way into the main event race. We saw that there were about three packs last week in Knockout Q at Tennessee, and it's going to take them a while to get bunched up here, and they've only got about two and a half minutes left to go. They were not given ten minutes like normally last week. The only reason they were given ten minutes last week, basically being a restrictor plate track, was because... It was a track that they were new to. They didn't have much experience at. But this track is just as big as Tennessee is. It's a three-mile super speedway ra uh, race track, and they were only given five minutes. It'll be about two minutes left when Michael Norman completes his first timed lap, and he was the first driver on track, so not a lot of time, as his first lap will be a 56.850. Let's see if Qualls beats that. Nope, 56.965, so Michael Norman probably got a little bit of help off the slipstream of the 23 there for his lap. Now he's behind Brandon Gonzalez, and whoop, oh, Jace Nelson just jumped to the top of the leaderboard. I think he's working with some drivers. Yeah, he's working with Seth Cole, and couldn't tell. Was that Michaels back there? Yes. And Austin Guype just jumped up to the top of the leaderboard with a 55.347. He's got the slipstream off the back of Sean Galligan. And right now, he's at the top of the leaderboard. Fastest lap. Well, not for long. Kyle Matthews just jumped to the top. He's working with Johnny Gardner and Cody Lamas. Lamas just jumped up to second fastest. Gardner, I believe, is on... Well, no, I thought he was on his first time lap. He's 13th fastest right now. So Kyle Matthews, who has missed a lot of races lately, looks like he's trying to make a case for himself to get back into a points-paying race. Boy, and these drivers, there's going to be very few of them. They're going to be able to even complete another lap. So this may be the money lap for a number of them. Michaels just jumped up to third. Sam McMillan jumped up to fourth. Only three drivers have hit the 54s. Matthews, Lamas, and Michaels. That doesn't mean they're safe, though. And Guype just jumped up, 54.181. So he's at the top. That might have been his money lap. Let's see what Matthews gets. Does he get any better than a 54.4? 54-6. Did anyone jump up? Not from that group. Dallas McIntosh. He beat his lap, but he only moved up to 14th. How about this group? This could be something. With Gonzalez and Norman. Gonzalez up to second. Norman to the top of the board. And Stephen Poe at the third just jumped up to seventh. And they may actually get to run another lap. That group right there. Timer's up. And the last drivers to cross the stripe, I believe, was this group of Citadino, McMillan, and McIntyre. So, they still have an opportunity to turn a lap here. 
Crossing the line, anybody from this group jump up. Yes, Galligan to the top of the board. Nobody else jumped up there. Guype is still second. Fitzwater, 19th fastest last time by, this time by. Still 19th. Matthews, 5th. So he will probably be in. Gardner, 11th. Lamas, 12th. They may not be in. Matthews may be in a good situation. We'll see. Still 18th for McIntosh. Let's see about Gonzalez, Norman, and Pollard. Pollard, top of the leaderboard. Gonzalez in second. Norman in third. Here comes Qualls and Srigley. Qualls, 17th. Srigley, 18th. 16th for Flickinger. And did this group do anything? 14th. For Matt McIntyre, 11th for Citadino. And Sam McMillan got 7th. He transfers in. And wow, Seth Cole. Almost. Almost got in. 54.221. I think the session's over, though. And we have our 7 drivers that will transfer into the main event. And they will be Stephen Pollard the 3rd, Sean Galligan, Michael Norman, Brandon Gonzalez. Drivers as well as Austin Guype, Kyle Matthews, and Sam McMillan, excuse me, didn't expect that hiccup, uh, will get the final transfer spot. Look how close it was between 8th on down through 11th. That is 8 one, no, that's 800 thousandths, isn't it? No, I think that's 8 one thousandths. I'm not sure. But that was close. But man, Seth Cole, Jason Nelson... Joshua Michaels, he doesn't make the race, so that battle between himself and Norman will continue on for 36th in points because Norman made the show. Citadino, Gardner, Lamas, McIntyre, Dowd, Flickinger, Qualls, Sprigley, McIntosh, Fitzwater, and Acavito were the drivers that will not qualify in. So we know the drivers that will transfer in, and it's going to be very interesting, no doubt, with the kind of racing we just saw. Let's see what happens now. We put 42 cars on the track as we get ready to go live for today's race at Coca-Cola Speedway. And welcome everybody to our 18th race of the season. We are here live at Coca-Cola Super Speedway. And we're getting ready for our second of two back-to-back -back restrictor plate races. We ended up having Mason Powers go to victory lane last week and what do you know, he's starting on the pole position for today's race. Let's see if he can go two for two in restrictor plate racing. Not many people are able to do that. We'll see what he can do here today and it's not Illuminati, folks, but there are two Golden Corral Chevrolets starting on the front row with William Brock starting on the outside of Mason Powers. So, it's an all Golden Corral Chevrolet front row. Never thought I'd see the day, as they will be the top two starters for today's race. Lining up in third place, someone get out the fire water, because this guy has been hot. Benjamin Miles, another solid run last week at Tennessee and he has jumped his way up to fifth in the point stands. He's still looking for that first win, but right now the consistency is definitely there for the Napa Chevrolet team. Alongside him, Tristan Folks in the 17. He ended up uh, having a pretty rocky race last week at Tennessee. He probably would have run well, but he got caught a lap down early, and as a result, that really hurt his chances of a good finish. Rolling off from third place will be Carson Scott in the 38. And Jeremy Jones, who took over the point lead last week, he will start off from the sixth position. John Arndt will start behind his AS racing teammate uh, in the 24. And alongside of him, Charles Samper, still trying to get that program going in his Retro Racing Enterprises number 03. He did have a somewhat decent finish last week. Anthony McCurry finished runner-up last week to Mason Powers, and he'll roll off from the seventh position alongside of Holden Gluba who is still trying to find victory lane in that Aaron's Dream Machine. And then Pichu London, who actually dropped outside the top 10 in points after a poor run last week, is trying to get himself back up into the top 10 in points. Still looking for that first win as well. Alongside of him, completing your top 10 will be JT Bryant. JT Bryant comes into this race holding the second wild card spot. He's right now 14th in the points. Let's take a look at the rest of your starting lineup for today's race. There you see Kyle Matthews making the race after a long tenure of not being in the main event another driver that uh, made it as well that hasn't been here for a while is the 23 i believe brandon gonzalez i think anyway uh we're getting ready to go green and yeah let's get the command fire the engines up 
Ladies and gentlemen, start your engines. And I... The reason that I paused there for a moment is I might have made a mistake. I don't know for certain if I did or not. But I might have made a mistake. I... It seems to me like Brandon Gonzalez did make the race. But I'm trying to remember what driver didn't. And I don't think I put Brandon in this field. I didn't see him. Let me look in the driver thing. Did they give a 23 car? Nope. I think I messed up. I think I have a driver in that shouldn't be in. And I have a driver out that should be in. So what I'm going to do, just to let you know that this is on the up and up. The driver that's in, I will let them still run. I'll, I don't even know who it is. And uh, if I find out Brandon Gonzalez should have made the show and isn't in the show, he will get the same amount of points as the driver that he should have been in in place of. And he'll get the same number of points. Boy, that's going to be nagging at me. Oh, yep, I can see the car that I failed on. I can see it right now. The 52 of Seth Cole should not have been in this race. Should have been the 23. So wherever Seth Cole finishes this race, Brandon Gonzalez will get the same amount of points. I apologize for that, folks. Completely unprofessional of me, and I just noticed it. Because I thought I remember Brandon Gonzalez was like second or third fastest in uh, the qualifying session. So I apologize to Brandon, and uh, not much more I can do. So we're getting ready to go green here with that cloud over my head. And Mason Powers will lead the Golden Corral Chevrolet front row down the front straightaway. The pace car peels off. 17 laps of racing. Doesn't seem like much, but it's a three-mile racetrack. So it'll take him a while to take these laps down. But here we go. The Coca-Cola 400 Coca-Cola Super Speedway is green. Just getting myself a few gulps of water because I have a feeling I'm going to be doing a lot of talking in this race. We're already thinking about three wide back there with Jessica Shelton, Pichu London. And they are three wide. JT Bryant pushed up to the high line. And here comes Benjamin Miles with Carson Scott and John Arndt. And are they thinking three wide? No, I think they're thinking four wide maybe. Oh, boy. Three wide's okay. Four wide, it's all right, but usually not the best thing coming off the corner is Miles with the advantage heading into three. On the inside line, he will move to the front. Carson Scott moves to second. Teammate John Art moving to third. Let's watch him off the corner. Looks like they're all good, at least for this first lap. And the first lap of the day, a bonus point will go in the direction of the Napa Chevrolet. Benjamin Miles will lead the first lap of the race. Wow, the ticker has a little bit of a glitch there. It doesn't update to the correct thing right off the bat. Benjamin Miles, as I mentioned, still looking for that first win. He's got three runner-up finishes this season. Two of them coming to Joshua Circuli's two wins. You got Miles, and then you've got teammates from AS Racing in second and third, and then teammates from Tweenix Racing in fourth and fifth with Poteet and Trent Dunham. That was Trent. That was Trent Dunham in the one. Ryan Madden in the 88. And oh man, they just took out the field. They just swept up and took out the field. Oh my goodness. And they're piling in. They are piling in. And man. Well, Benjamin Miles, the leader, as they head back to the line. Caution flag obviously is out. Oh, man, Pichu London stuck on the apron, holding Gluba. Michael Norman, Ryan Acosta involved in this one. He was involved in the first wreck last week, if I remember correctly. Outside pole sitter William Brock's on pit row. Jake Baskinger is involved. There's Madden. There's Poteet. London now on pit road. Kyle Matthews on pit road. John Arts on pit road. JT Bryant, Levi McIntyre have damage. Stephen Pollard III's got damage. Joshua Circuli is damaged. Our points leader, Jeremy Jones, is involved. Tristan Folks is damaged. Front end damage on Richardson. McCrory is all beat up. Galligan's got damaged. LaPlante's got left side damage. Same for Mason Wood. Hood crunched up on the Bass Pro Shop Chevrolet. Be quicker telling you who isn't damaged rather than who is. 
And the caution flag waves for the first time here today at Coca-Cola Speedway. But I'll tell you what, having back-to-back -back Super Speedway races, you think they're wild card races? Well, guess what? I think we're seeing for sure that these are wild card races. Survival of the finish, and you'll end up with a good points day. As Benjamin Miles leads us under our first caution of the day, let's take a look at what happened. Classic Super Speedway where a wreck happens heading down towards the apron and sweeps right back up. Collecting a number of drivers, like Dylan Young may have gotten involved as well as he's coming to pit road. Number of drivers taking this opportunity to pit under our first caution of the day at Coca-Cola Speedway. Let's take a look at our, re our replay of what happened. All right, this was down the back straightaway. Trent Dunham thought about going three wide up the middle with his teammate Dylan Poteet. And let's see where the initial contact begins. I wonder if maybe Dylan Young gets into the 88 of Ryan Madden and pushes him up the track. Okay, now he's going to dive low, looking four wide. Madden sees it, moves up to give the Worth Dodge dart room, and he just moved up too much. Trent was already there, and Trent couldn't move any further up. Mason Powers was already there. Beside him, and there they go, down onto the apron, and unfortunately was heading into the entrance of a corner. I don't know if they hit the wall beforehand or not, nope. And then Trent's going to get one group of the front of the field, and then Madden's going to get the other. Trent gets the 24 of Arndt and the 31 of his teammate Poteet. There's William Brock, here comes Jeremy Jones. The plant did get damaged, but he got through it pretty well. There's Wood, Pollard. Leon Alvarez gets some damage there. So does Galligan. Siren does a pretty good job getting through. Richardson wheel hops a little there. Blaine Key is involved. JT Bryant. I see Key and Eddington there. The orange car on the left, lower left. Looks like he might have gotten involved circularly. That's second and third in points. First, second, and third in points right there, with including the 18 of Jeremy Jones. Sanford gets some right side damage. Let's see now uh, how the 88, who he's initially swept up and I'm not certain but it almost looked like the 17 of folks was out of shape before these two even slid up the racetrack now I might be wrong in that assumption and we will confirm that but I it seems like that's what it looked like to me now we know Trent goes up and collects the 24 and the 31 who does the 88 clobber I think it might have been the 99 yeah there you see skid marks right there yeah folks got turned already and they just see drivers just getting clipped. Sanford actually got his damage after hitting Folks. Gluba, oh, gets hit right there in the right rear. But 55 might have actually gotten through that pretty well. And then here comes a shot from Eddington. Nope, from Bouchard. There's Matthews, Baskinger, London back here. Voiles and the 88 actually flips over onto its roof. And I'm curious as well. Oh, man, Voyle's car, black smoke erupting already. His day, obviously, over. Let's see. Oh, yeah. See, I thought I saw the 17 already spun out before the 1 and the 88 came back up. Oh, Dylan Young moves up. Door bangs Jessica Shelton. Then she goes up and collects Tristan Folks. And then Folks is the one that snaps loose and goes around. And there you see Trent going up the racetrack and everybody else after... The one in the 88 slid back up into traffic. So that's what happened right there. So, wow. A lot of drivers trying four wide. And as we saw, not the best of plans. Boy, Tim Walsh, Joshua Lee, Rocco Twyman taking the high road. And good thing they did. I think they got through it. We're under caution for the first time today. The big one has struck early here at Coca-Cola Speedway. Lights are out atop the pace car. We're getting ready to go back green. It'll be on lap 7 of 17, which will give us 11 laps remaining in today's event. Kyle Matthews lines up on the inside line. He's a lap down after sitting on pit road, repairing damage. Same for the 55 of Holden Glubin, the 21 of Pichu London. However, they're at least able to still be running. We have a number of drivers behind the wall. I believe it's 11 to drivers to be exact, including the driver who came into today's race as the points leader, Jeremy Jones. He's out in 32nd. Levi McIntyre, 33rd. Stephen Paul with the third, 34th. William Brock started second, will finish 35th. Dylan Poteet and his teammate Trent Dunham, 36th, 37th. Ryan Madden, 38th. John Arndt, 39th. Voyles in 40th. Leon Alvarez, we saw him get involved in that wreck. I thought maybe he got through it with minimal damage. Apparently not. They pushed that car behind the wall. He'll finish 41st. And Daniel Bouchard, who came into this race, 7th in the point stands. He's out of the race now. He'll finish dead last here today. So we have 31 drivers on the racetrack, 28 still on the lead lap. Your top 10 as we go back green is Benjamin Miles, Carson Scott, Mason Wood, 
Seth Cole, Jessica Shelton, Austin Geip, Joshua Lee, who we saw go on the high side, moved up to 7th. Rocco Twyman moved up to 8th, and Tim Walsh moved up to 9th. They avoided the wreck. They're now in the top 10. Noah Cars, complete your top 10 as the green flag is back out here on lap 7. Going to be interesting drivers trying to get around these lap machines. Don't know if they're up to speed or not. Kyle Matthews doesn't look like he is. Bluba and London might be, though, and the crossover move for Carson Scott as he's going to all by his lonesome move to the inside line and bypass Benjamin Miles, taking over the lead. That, I believe, is the first lead change officially of the day when they cross the stripe, unless Miles can get the lead back, and he's going to try it. He goes for the crossover down the back straightaway, and he's going to try and take the top position back, heading into three. We've unofficially had three lead changes. This would actually be the fourth one, but only one at the line. Benjamin Miles led lap one. He's led every lap so far at the stripe and looks like he will continue to lead as he brings him down the front straightaway here. Looks like drivers are having some difficulty with the 09 of Kyle Matthews who apparently is not fully up to speed and it's split the field apart which is not necessarily a bad thing. May end up making the likelihood of another caution flag be slim to none. Anyway, back up at the front. Take a look who's now emerged into this top three and is Maybe going to try and go for the lead. That's Mason Powers, who won last week at Tennessee under caution. Now keep in mind, the 55 and the 21, they're up in this lead pack, but they are not contending for the win at this point in time. They are lap machines, and here comes Mason Powers. Run to the inside line, looking to go three wide into three, unless Miles can somehow clear Carson Scott. He's not going to be able to do it. Here comes the Golden Corral Chevrolet, the pole sitter, going back to the front with help from Austin Geip. Tim Walsh in the mix as well. Look at Anthony McCurry. Damaged rear on his Audi and all. And he's right there. He's in the mix of this as well. Ooh, that was close to the line. Carson Scott just barely leads that lap. He'll get the valuable bonus point as it's gaped down low. Powers in the middle. Scott up high and they're three wide behind him. Gaped to the lead. Tim Walsh will move to second. Noah Carr is trying to look for third place now underneath the Mason Powers. I'd love to see this thing go green to the end. Last week, I thought we were setting up for a great finish at Tennessee, and we had that late race caution, which was kind of a buzz killer. Not taking anything away from the win that Mason Powers got, but I would have loved to have seen what kind of a finish we would have had. We've seen some photo finishes at the line already in this race, and hopefully we'd see one on the final lap coming to the checkers. Tim Walsh will now be the third different leader of the day as he'll cross the line and get a valuable bonus point. And this could definitely be a valuable points day for him with the fact that Jeremy Jones is out of the race. We don't see either Keon Eddington or Joshua Circuli up at the front. Perfect opportunity for that 15 car who comes in sixth in the point standings. Matter of fact, let's find out where those drivers are running. How about the 33 of Kean Eddington? Came into this race only 12 points behind. Oop, wrong one, sorry. Behind Jeremy Jones. Right now he's running in the 20th position with this second group. So good run for him right now. Joshua Circuli is only four points behind his teammate Kean Eddington. Came in 16 points behind Jeremy Jones. Right now running in the 18th spot. So they're both at least running in the top 20. And it would be Eddington, I believe, that would take the points lead over heading into next week. You see Jake Baskinger up here. He's running, was scored 19th. I think he's further up than that now. Let's see what it updates itself to. He's now 17th, now working underneath Cooper Siron. So Baskinger, he would have a good points day. And we know Benjamin Miles is running up here in this lead group with a shot for the win. Last time by, was scored in 11th place. Up front, battle on for the lead. How would it be for Brandon Gonzalez if Seth Cole wins this race? Now, Seth Cole would get credit for the win, but Brandon Gonzalez would get just as many points as that 52 does. And he will take the lead, will Seth Cole, but he's got a rear deck lid full of Carson Scott and then the lap machine of Holden Gluba. You got Gluba in the 55, London in the 21. They are not on the lead lap, but that doesn't mean they aren't going to be factors in the outcome of this race. And Seth Cole will get a valuable bonus point, as will likewise Brandon Gonzalez. There's a couple drivers just 
hanging at the back of this pack. We didn't see Benjamin Miles sergeant his way up to the front yet. After he got drifted back. Manuel Hartnett just kind of biding his time. Joshua Lee's just hanging around there. Anthony McCurry. And Sam McMillan. Don't count those drivers out. They still have a shot. Is it side by side for the lead again? Rocco Twyman to the inside. Joe Gibbs Racing, two wins this season, one at a restricted plate track, but both coming in the form of Jeremy Jones. Rocco Twyman trying to pick up his first win of the season. Right now, eighth in the point standings. A win would definitely help him out. He will at least get a very valuable bonus point as he will lead the completion of lap 12, going on to lap 13. Eight laps to go here at Coca-Cola. Sam McMillan's running 12th. We have 12 drivers in the lead pack for this victory right now. Twyman, Walsh, Miles, Cole, Lee, Powers, Scott, Hartnett, Cars, Guype, McCrory, and McMillan. Those are the drivers that more than likely are going to sell it out for this win. Out of those drivers, the only ones that have been to victory lane are Walsh, Powers, and Cars. And McMillan. So four of the top 12 here have been to victory lane. That gives us a two and three chance that we are going to have a different race winner for this season. Take the checkers here at Coca-Cola. Benjamin Miles, time to charge the front apparently for the 25. Look into the inside line for the lead once again as they took the line with four to go. Tim Walsh there in second. And here comes Joshua Lee. He has been so consistent this season. Stayed in the top 10 the entire year, but he has not gotten to victory lane yet. Would this be his time? Here he goes for second underneath of Tim Walsh with Carson Scott helping him. Now Carson Scott's going to form a, sec a third line down low. He's going to battle three wide. That's actually not going to be for second. Walsh gets the run the outside line with help from Twyman. That's actually going to be a battle for third. And now Carson Scott has to tuck back in line. Out of turn four, about a car length in hand. Oh no, Carson Scott has to pit. We're gonna have green flag pit stops in the closing stages of this race. Please, oh please, do not have a late race caution come out. Not for the second week in a row. Not when it's shaping up to be a good finish. But this throws the question of pit strategy into play. Would anyone be willing to risk it? Carson Scott's team, apparently the obvious answer for them was no. They've hit pit lane. Let's quickly jump back to the 38. He's on pit road. Joshua Circuli not risking it. He's on. Folks, Acosta, JT Bryant, Michael Norman's on. James Richardson, Mason Wood, they've hit pit road as well. Anyone from this lead pack going to be pitting this time? They're all running low. That makes me wonder if they're going to pit. Looks like Miles is pitting. Is anybody else going to pit? Here comes Miles, Seth Cole, Sam McMillan, Emmanuel Hartnett. That turns the lead over to a three-wide battle to the stripe. Lee leads that lap by a splitter. Two to go. And then there were, what, seven, I think? We got Lee, Twyman, Walsh, Powers, Gype, Cars, and McCrory, I believe. Please, no caution. Please. Just get them to the white. That's all they need to do. But is anybody going to be pitting here coming to the white flag? Or will they run out of fuel trying to stretch it? Rocco Twyman looking low on Joshua Lee. That's the battle for the lead. Tim Walsh going to try and utilize that. Gets a big run there through turns three and four. Is anyone pitting from the lead pack here coming to the white? Walsh looks like he's pitting. He is. Walsh will give up an opportunity at the win to come down and get fuel. White flag, one more time around. Rocco Twyman leads, Joshua Lee in second. Third place, Mason Powers has a lap machine between himself and Lee, and now he's gonna go to the inside with the slower car of, of Joshua Circuli holding them up. Oh, careful, careful, careful. They're down to 188, 187, trying to get around the damaged machine of Joshua Circuli. And now Mason Powers, right in line to maybe be able to go two in a row. Another slower car. That's Kean Eddington. He'll get out of the way, though. Mason Powers trying to make the move. Can he go two in a row in SS races? He's to the inside now of Joshua Lee. Lee's going to try and throw the block, but Powers is there. 
Oh, this could be close coming to the line. Inside line, outside line, which one's going to prevail? Can Lee pick up his first win? Will Powers go two in a row? Coming to the line, the checker flag waves over the hood of Mason Powers, I think, got it. Mason Powers goes to victory lane in his second straight restrictor plate start, his second race in a row, taking the checkered flag here today at Coca-Cola Super Speedway. Wow, Mason Powers. I don't know how close that even was. We are going to rewind this back to that lap. Oh my goodness. Look at this. It looked like with the naked eye, it was Mason Powers. And indeed it was by, boy, inches. It's inches. Boy. Let's see officially how close that was. It's the closest finish in Hershey's Cup Series history. There's no doubt about that. And officially, it was three one thousandths of a second. Wow. That was amazing. Mason Powers. Gets to two wins in a row, joining the likes of Jake Baskinger, Joshua Circuli, and Jeremy Jones. But he did it the quickest of those four, winning two super speedway races in a row. Last week, can't say he had it handed to him, but it was a lot easier for him to take the checkers than it was here today. He doggone earned it here today at Coca-Cola, and there could be one of your competitors for the championship in the chase hunt this season right there in that 44 team. Second straight victory for Mason Powers, and it comes in an unbelievable 3 one-thousandths of a second finish with Joshua Lee. 3 one-thousandths preventing Joshua Lee from getting his first win of the season, but the consistency continues for that five team. Austin Geip, a go-or-go go homer. What a great opportunity he had there. Third place, Anthony McCurry, damaged car and all, and he ends up finishing in fourth place. So Mason Powers, he finished first in two straight races at SS Plate Tracks. Anthony McCurry, his two finishes were second and fourth. So both of them really have great super speedway programs. Noah Carr's great run for him in fifth. Rocco Twyman will remain in the top ten in points with sixth. How about Jessica Shelton? We never really talked about the 0-2. But apparently she was one of those drivers decided to stay out. And she reaps the benefits of a top 10 finish with 7th. Benjamin Miles, he gets 8th place here today. Sam McMillan, ninth, And Tim Walsh will finish 10th. Seth Cole finishes 11th. So Brandon Gonzalez is going to get some valuable bonus points there. Didn't start the race, but he's still going to get points due to that error on my part. Manuel Harton at 12th. Carson Scott was the first of the drivers to hit pit road. He'll finish 13th though. Cooper Siren, 14th. And Blaine Keys. We'll finish 15th. And the rest of the drivers that finished on the lead lap are Charles Sanford, 16th, Dylan Young, 17th, Sean Galligan, 18th, and Jake Baskinger, 19th. As a matter of fact, the 13 and the 95 were just ahead of the leaders when they came to take the checkered flag. Holding Gluba stayed out. So did uh, Pichu London. They'll get 20th and 22nd. So even though they were trapped a lap down, they stayed out, made the most of it, and still came away with somewhat decent finishes. You look further down at the remainder of the field here of the drivers that were damaged or came to pit road. And you go down to 31st place, Kyle Matthews. And then the rest of the drivers finished out of the race, including the points leader, Jeremy Jones. So the points lead will more than likely be turned over to, I would say, yeah, I think the points lead is now going to be in the hands of Kean Eddington. He managed to finish uh, only two spots behind Circuli. So Circuli, if Eddington takes the points lead, well, Eddington will take the points lead over. That's pretty obvious. And I'm pretty certain, based on calculations in my head, I think it's going to be two points. Yeah, two points that he'll hold over uh, Joshua Circuli. How far back Jeremy Jones will be, I'm not certain. But it could be close for the points lead battle heading into. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching today's exciting race at Coca-Cola Super Speedway. If you enjoyed this race, be sure to give this video a like. Subscribe to Compare the Crew today. Next week, we're heading to Rockingham. We've already been to Rockingham, UK. Now it's time to go to the Rockingham in the United States, Rockingham, North Carolina.
Carolina, otherwise known as North Carolina Speedway. Hope you'll tune in for that, as here comes your official finishing results, going on down through 42nd, as well as your point standings heading into next week. We are now halfway through the season here in the Hershey's Cup Series, as you've been watching production of the NCAA Offline Racing at its best.